Hello grade 11s and welcome back to our series on acids and bases. We know that a neutralization reaction is a reaction when an acid and an alkali react with each other. The products formed in this reaction are a salt and water. A salt is a substance that forms when the hydrogen of an acid is displaced by a metal ion. A salt can be formed by the reaction between any acid and an alkali. This means that every acid forms a different type of salt. Hydrochloric acid gives us a chloride salt. Nitric acid gives us a nitrate salt. Sulfuric acid gives us a sulfate salt. Acetic acid or vinegar gives us an acetate salt. Acetic acid is also called ethanoic acid, so the salt is called an ethanoid. So far, we are aware of this particular method to make salts. That is the reaction of an acid with an alkali. Remember that an alkali is a soluble base. An acid plus an alkali react to form a salt plus water. In this lesson, we will investigate alternative ways of preparing salts other than by using an acid and an alkali. Before we try some examples, let us discuss the other general equations for the production of a salt. The next way to prepare a salt is by the reaction of an acid with a non-soluble base. One example of a non-soluble base is a metal oxide. The general equation for the reaction of an acid with a metal oxide is an acid plus a metal oxide react to form a salt plus water. The general equation for the reaction of an acid and a metal oxide is very similar to the general equation for the reaction of an acid and an alkali. The third method of preparing a salt is by the reaction of an acid and a carbonate. Remember that a carbonate is a compound containing the polyatomic ion, CO3 2-. The general equation for the reaction of an acid with the carbonate is an acid plus a carbonate reacts to form a salt plus carbon dioxide plus water. Let us join Diyasha as she investigates this matter of salt preparation using some examples. Even though an alkali and a base are similar, there is an important difference. Can you remember what an alkali is? That's right, an alkali is a soluble base. We form alkalis when oxides of group 1 metal oxides dissolve in water. These metal oxides then form hydroxides. All of these group 1 metal hydroxides are strong bases. There's one other example of an alkali that you should know about. This is the solution formed when ammonia gas dissolves in water. Ammonia is very soluble in water and the solution formed is basic. This means that a solution of ammonia is an alkali. It contains ammonium hydroxide. So, if I wanted to make the salt ammonium chloride, can you select the ingredients we would need? What reactants would you use to prepare ammonium chloride? I hope you have an answer. Now you can see if it is correct. When given a problem like this, I like to start by choosing a general equation. Here I have it. An acid plus an alkali react to form salt plus water. If we want to make ammonium chloride, the only acid that we can use is hydrochloric acid with the formula HCl. The alkali to use must be ammonium hydroxide with the formula NH4OH. Now, to get the salt, the hydrogen from the acid is donated to the alkali and the ammonium from the alkali joins the anion of the acid. Our salt will therefore be nh 4 CL. And now to complete the equation, all I need to do is add in water as a product. Next, check that it is balanced. 
count the number of each atoms present above and below the equation. Here I have one chlorine and here I have one chlorine. Next, one oxygen here and one oxygen here. Now for the hydrogen atoms. One plus four plus one gives us six hydrogen atoms. And below we have four plus two, which is also six. So this equation is balanced. Right, now that we understand that alkalis are soluble bases and only the group one metal oxides form strong alkalis, let's move on to look at other metal oxides. Group two metal oxides are partially soluble, but most of the other metal oxides are less soluble. These metal oxides will also neutralize an acid, but the process may take longer, or alternatively, we will need to adapt the method we use. Before we go to the lab, can you work out what we need if we want to make copper 2 sulfate? What reactants would you use to prepare copper 2 sulfate? In this case, the general equation is an acid plus a base reacts to form salt plus water. The acid we need is sulfuric acid and the base we need is copper 2 oxide. So the word equation is copper 2 oxide plus sulfuric acid react to form copper 2 sulfate plus water. Let's go to the lab now to see what method John is using to make this. I have my base here. It's black copper 2 oxide. Remember, this doesn't dissolve in water. So I can't do an acid plus an alkali experiment here. But I am going to add sulfuric acid to this base. Not much is happening. So I'm going to add some energy by heating it. Place it on the Bunsen burner and let's leave it for a few moments. If you look carefully, you'll see the solution is starting to go blue. This indicates the presence of copper 2 plus ions, but there's still a lot of unreacted copper 2 oxide which is the black stuff at the bottom. I'm going to filter this using this filter paper now. Here's the black copper 2 oxide that hasn't reacted. Coming out here at the bottom, is the blue filtrate that contains our lovely copper salt. Copper 2 sulfate crystals are going to form in this evaporating dish. We'll have a look at those later. Wow, wasn't that solution an amazing blue color? Now, did you manage to write the balanced equation? Check your answer now. Copper 2 oxide, which is CuO, plus sulfuric acid, H2SO4, react to form copper 2 sulfate, which is CuSO4, plus water, H2O. Notice in this reaction, the acid donates two hydrogen ions and the metal oxide accepts these to form water. So the metal oxide is acting as a base. According to the definition, an acid is a proton donor. A base is a proton acceptor. Let us go back to the third method of salt preparation, the reaction of an acid with a carbonate. The general equation for the reaction of an acid with a carbonate is an acid plus a carbonate reacts to form a salt plus carbon dioxide plus water. Let's see what happens when an acid is added to a metal carbonate. You can see that bubbles form when an acid reacts with a carbonate. We suspect that the gas may be carbon dioxide, but the gas is colorless and odorless. So how do we prove that? Let us join John in the lab. 
I think that when you react vinegar and bicarbonate of soda together, that the gas released will be carbon dioxide. But don't take my word for it. Remember, we should confirm our thinking by doing an experiment. Can you remember the test for carbon dioxide? Clear lime water should turn milky. So let's go and see what happens here. Here's the clear lime water, putting a delivery tube into it. And here's my bicarbonate of soda. I'm adding vinegar to it. Watch what happens. There it's fizzing up and it's releasing a gas. The lime water has gone cloudy. This is a clear indication that carbon dioxide is released. So we have identified that the gas given off is definitely carbon dioxide. But what other products are formed? Let's take a look at the chemical formula to solve this problem. The formula for vinegar is CH3COOH. And sodium hydrogen carbonate has a formula NaHCO3. The carbon dioxide must come from the bicarbonate ion. When CO2 is removed from the HCO3, a hydroxide ion is left over. Now we know vinegar is an acid, which can be called acetic acid. So vinegar must donate a hydrogen ion to join this hydroxide ion to form water. Now, there's a sodium ion, Na+, left over from the sodium bicarbonate, and CH3COO, left over from the vinegar. This ion is called the acetate ion. Can you see that when the sodium ion and the acetate ion combine, they will form a salt? Remember, a salt is a substance where a metal ion has replaced a hydrogen ion. In this case, Na plus has replaced the hydrogen ion here, and we now have CH3COONA. This is called sodium acetate. Now before we continue, let's recap what our products are. This means that we can now write an equation for the reaction. Acetic acid plus sodium bicarbonate react to form sodium acetate plus carbon dioxide plus water. The chemical equation for this is CH3COOH plus NAHCO3 react to form CH3 C-O-O-N-A plus C-O-2 plus H-2-O. Check. Is this equation balanced? Yes, it is. This type of reaction is actually very useful. It takes place whenever you bake. Baking powder contains sodium bicarbonate that decomposes when heated, but it also contains tartaric acid. These two ingredients combine to make sure that more carbon dioxide gas is released, and so the tiny bubbles are spread evenly throughout a cake or bread. Did you know that if you don't have baking powder, you can use sodium bicarbonate and cream of tartar instead? So we now know three ways to prepare salts. Let us recap. An acid plus an alkali react to form a salt plus water. An acid plus a metal oxide react to form a salt plus water. An acid plus a carbonate react to form a salt plus carbon dioxide plus water. 
Here is an interesting application of our knowledge about acids and bases. A neutralization reaction is used in pit latrines, often known as bleh toilets. Bleh toilets are toilets that do not make use of flushing water. They can also be installed in rural areas where there is no running water. The urine and feces in the pit are slightly acidic. This acid attracts flies and causes odors. Ash and limestone are basic. If we use limestone to build the pit and add ash or limestone into the pit, we neutralize the acid in the pit and therefore reduce odor and flies. That's all for today. Thank you for joining me in this topic on acids and bases. Make sure that you attempt all the questions in the task video. Until next time, goodbye.